So th doing this live stream will actually help me stay focused a little bit, but also it's just nice. I like doing full cars on live. Yeah, versatility. I, I actually thought uh, it was a good coincidence too. Like I remember somebody asking about a fusion. So we're gonna go over this front quarters, um, which is gonna be pretty much the same as we did on that Nautilus and you'll see how. So we actually don't have to do any inside trimming at all either. So we're just applying, this is my own little thing for those that are wondering, it's called glass aid. Um, usually I have this already on the, on the back window before we get started. Um, I don't talk about it too much. It's just my way of protecting the back window. Cool. So that's lined. I like I like this like Tron look, right? So you got the white car with the white pin straping around the window. It's just kind of fun. So we gotta change out a blade first. Oh no, they're soapy. Why are they soapy? That's not good. Yeah, versatility, you do, that's exactly right. Just cut the front quarters um, pretty much exact. You have a little bit of space on that leading edge in the front. Um, so like right in here, you have a little bit of room. Other than that, uh, nothing on the other sides which is pretty typical. So I'm pretty sure I had like soap drip out onto like some of my stuff. So now I'm trying to handle blades with like soapy hands and that's scary. Um, Tim Pro says I'm working on a Ford Mustang installing Omnique film Buddy, that's my second car with it. Interesting. I haven't heard of Omni, actually. Windows Tint Warriors not calling it Glass A Pool. Um, is 3M too thin? Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, I'll talk. We'll, we'll discuss it. The, uh, so, everything that I could find, like, and I, I found the specific one, um, it's like five and a half mil. So pretty much the thickest white um, that I could find, like glass aid, it was like an eight mil um, electrical tape, but it's soft, right? So it just cuts right through. So it's not even necessarily about just the thickness, but it's also about um, having it be a little bit more rigid to absorb some of the cutting. And what you're gonna find is every manufacturer has a thin tape cut very thin, and every manufacturer has a thick tape cut very thick um, or cut very wide. Um, nobody has a thick tape cut very thin, and that's what's special about Glass Aid. Um, but I basically vetted a bunch of options out there, um, basic, well, like potential options, and then had it custom um, sized down. So. It's not really a ton special about it. Um, just the fact that I went through the effort to figure out what worked best and get it cheap enough to market, so. So we're using a 20 inch roll. We're using a 20 inch roll on the front doors and reason being is because I'm almost done my 36 and I just want to make sure I have enough to do the front and the back or the back back glass and the sides. So usually I take a 36 inch roll, cut it in half um, and that's what we're going to do on the back doors. My fingers are so slippery right now from like touching soap or something. That is majorly screwing me up right now. Uh, Sergio, what do you think about Expel cutting software to the people who don't buy their film? Um, I l really liked Expel's cutting software. Um, sounds like they're cracking down though, so don't get too dependent on it. Um, they were one of the few 
They're really like the best cutting software out there. Their patterns were, were excellent. Um, most other software, you're gonna find out people shave the inside of the windows or the patterns are not very close. True Cut was like a close second um, as far as pattern closeness stuff, but not as good. I don't know. I've, I've got a lot of grapes with, with plotter software. I don't mind the price, but there's so many that are trying to go like exclusive. Like it, you have to use our film in order to use our software and that's just beyond crazy to me. Especially when you have to pay for the software. <laughs> I like how you worded that. Uh, Ryan says I actually saved the release liner in one of those quarter windows um, on the new Fusions, and he uses that as a template for future quarter windows. Uh, at the end, he says, not earth-shattering info, but it works. <laughs> it's good. I like it. Yeah, you definitely can, uh, can save templates from cars, um, like back windows, quarter windows, and stuff like that. So, like... I should save a template from it, but I just don't have a good place to store a bunch of them. There's so many different kinds, but if you're at a shop, it's good. Um, yours, who said that? Yours is a better price than 3M. Yeah, mine's like significantly cheaper too. Mine's like four bucks a roll. 3M is like $11 a roll. 3M's really expensive. Um, Sergio, what do you think about Global Films? Um, I, I like, I don't have a lot of experience with Global. Um, but I've used it a little bit. Um, Global's a solid company. A lot of people like Global. Easy to work with. Um, and it uh, should last you a long, long, long time. Okay, so what I'm worried is that we're, you know, we should have enough to cover the back window. Hopefully, or else we're gonna have to run outside right quick. But yeah, Global's good. Um, my, I always bring this up when I hear about Global. The one thing I really dislike about Global is uh, if you ever have to remove Global from a window, it's not fun. It leaves a lot of glue behind and a real thick, aggressive layer, like more so than like Lumar and stuff. So that's what I really noticed. Um, but if you get it on the glass and you don't have to fuck with it ever again, then you should be good. And that's like the main thing. Kyle Phillips asked, does anyone shrink quarter glasses? I do, not all of them, but I definitely do some of them. So I'm glad you asked that actually. So the, the reason being for the shrinking quarter windows and like on these, right? You don't have to, but like it helps. If you're trying to squeegee everything out evenly and your slip is a little extra slippery. You might have a little thing pop up here or there. So it only takes like half a second to shrink a quarter window. So you might as well just do it really quick and prevent any problems that you might have. So there's, there's like a, there's very polarizing opinions though on all that. Okay, so just like the older fusions, these shift quite a bit. Like, look at that. Holy shit. That's a lot of shifting. So I found cutting on one side and then meeting that in the middle at this point just helps me get a much cleaner point. It's nifty. Yeah, these are these are going to be identical. Oh, I gotta put I gotta put a dry shrink on the back window. I forgot. Oh, so. 
first thing I always do is I'll line the back window and then I'll prep it with uh, like dry shrink prep. So the reason, reason for that is it's gonna take a little bit to dry so I can cut these out and install them while that's drying. So we're still gonna install these while it's drying so I haven't lost out. I'm just glad I remembered while I'm still cutting these out. So we're gonna go fix that. We're also gonna double shrink these today. You're gonna get a lot of these though. Fusions are super common. Okay. Sergio asks, what is the best computer software? Um, that, uh, that's opening a can of worms right there. So, like I said a little bit ago, um, there's a lot of software companies that try to lock you down to their film and that's, that's crazy to me. So, um, the best that I used was Expels for, for window tint patterns. They were just super close. It was almost as good as hand cutting. Um, they put a lot of work into their patterns. Um, the issue with, with them is I've, I've heard that they're cutting off dealers to go Expel exclusive. Um, and then for like, for PPF, they also had a cut bank program. So that basically meant you bought their film, you got a credit towards their software. Um, and as long as they like, that in fact isn't happening to the majority of people, I'd say go with their software. Um, I tried, I tried Trude Cut, Tint Tech. Um, I tried film and vinyl designs. And by and large, most of them have wavy top edges and people will cut out the patterns on the software and then go to the windows and retrim the top edge. And that's crazy. Like you shouldn't have to do that with software. So um, I still think Expel is probably the best one. The other ones like True Cut, that's through SunTech. SunTech was locking people down to SunTech. Um, Lumar wants you to be a Lumar dealer to use their software. So there's just a lot of it. So it doesn't leave you many options. Hand cutting, hand cutting's the best, the best software. <laughs> uh, no, actually I have not heard of First Cut. I'd, I'd try them out though. Who is that? Tim Pro says I use film and vinyl design um, and I just like tons of issues so I use Computer Cut. Yep, yep, I've had those same problems. We were using them for a little bit. Uh, computer Cut was pretty good. They're owned by Solar Guard, and I from so I got to be careful here. Um, but I, this happened with a couple of them, but I just want to make sure I have my uh, company straight. I believe they like they're through Solar Guard, and they want you to use Solar Guard film. So they let us use it for like a year, and then they cut us off from their software because we didn't use Solar Guard, and we still had to pay for the software. So but I think it's free if you use their film. I don't know why companies keep trying to aggressively force people into their film that way. It's really skeevy. But the uh, same thing for like Tint Tech right now. Um, a lot of short front edges and stuff. So it's just really annoying. Um, software, you never know if a pattern's gonna work until you get it on the car. And at that point, you've put all the time and effort into shrinking, prepping, installing, and then you gotta start over and hand cut it. Like it's 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 really really frustrating. So that's why that's why I like. Well, I mean, obviously circumstances have to do with not using a plotter in an environment like this, but um, you'll see. In my own space, I'll still hand cut. It's just I I can rely on it and it's quick. lot of people asking about plotters though really interesting when I started tinning I was asking about plotters too a little bit 
And <laughs> if you were, if you didn't hand cut, you weren't a tenor. That's what a lot of guys would say. It's really funny. I've <laughs> Tinter Lou. I've ordered flat outs uh, and glass eight since watching your live streams. I'm seriously considering Avery Dennison now uh, after seeing it in action. Avery should sponsor your live streams. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Um, I like I like Avery and R for sure. Um, shoot them a message for me. <laughs> um, we, we're supposed to have a class coming up too so like they'll be sponsoring that class but as far as like providing film for it so um that's something we got to build up over time so quite possibly Did somebody just asked which cut program's the best again which cut program again um i'm not gonna go back into it again but i like to expel the best that's a that's a, my brief explanation Let's see where I'm like out of this stuff. I know I have another bottle, but I don't remember where I put it. Uh, I use Solar Guard without buying their tent. It just costs more. Hector, how long have you been using uh, their software for? Because we were using it and then like after a year they cut us off. So, I don't know, maybe they don't do that for everybody, or I don't know, but that was really, really annoying. Because, like, their software was okay. It wasn't great, but it was okay. <laughs> That's how I feel about most of them. Um, somebody asked with Glass Aid, does it affect shrinking at all? Um, not really, or at least I don't think it does. Not, not with the way I shrink things. Um, and we'll go over that as soon as I get there. Um, I can show you in detail. 13 years, good God. Well, you're special. That's good. As long as they don't cut people off, I mean, I don't have a problem with them. I just remember having to switch from them to, uh, to another one. Yeah, there's a lot of people that have used their software um, and have used it for years. It's good. Just as long as like, like that. That's what I wanna, I wanna press. Is as long as they're not cutting people off. I don't care if you have to pay for it. You'll pay for the software on one car. It's totally worth it as a production tool. But it's like, hey, buy our film or don't use our software. That's crazy. So as long as that's not going on, then. I fully endorse it. Yeah, so on these quarters, we got just a slight border on all the edges, just like normal. So that's good. Nothing's changed. Nothing's changed at all with these 2020s. Just the numbers. Maybe the back lasts a little bit. We'll see. What the fuck? Who did that? Tinter Lou, super sticker, $20. You did a super sticker. Oh, look at that. I don't know if you guys can see this. You are amazing. You did the little pear super sticker. Thanks, man. Uh, he says, you are amazing. Oh, dude, thanks. You're amazing. <laughs> That that like Keanu Reeves like no you're awesome. Hang on, I lost I lost my positioning, but thank you so much for that. That's a it's an incredible uh, super sticker donation. So much appreciated. I think I had this all set and then I lost my train of thought, which I am not upset about that at all. <laughs> all right, there we go. I hope it made the car sound for you though. Little thing pops up on screen and makes a car sound. That makes it fun. Let's 
you guys know how this goes. Big side first, little side second. These front edges are typically pretty wide. So there's been quite a few times that I've had these short. That looks good. Like I haven't put it all the way front forward and then left like a, a seal gap and that's never fun. Except for this, so we gotta take the time to do this fun little quarters. God, I hate them. <laughs> They're just annoying. They're not hard. They're just tedious. Especially because you got the mirror in the way. But, like some smart people said, they make templates. Which is good, but I don't, I don't have a glass board here either. So... I use uh, Tent Light says he uses computer cut since 2001. Wow. That's a long time. All right. What do we need? I'm getting distracted. Let's not do that. Let's not get distracted too much. We need little pieces from cutting those fronts with 20s, which is actually a smart idea because then you can take these pieces and then Tetris them into quarter windows. And I'm pretty sure my light is gonna die. <laughs> oh no, oh no, the real questions come out. Uh, Ryan asks, is Helios and Tint Club, Tint Club the same type of films? You read on each website, they seem really close. Mm, maybe. <laughs> That's all I'll say, maybe. What up, Diamond? Glad you can make it back. All right, where's my light? Where's my little, as Jeff called it, a Star Wars lightsaber. Good God, I misplaced it. God damn it. We'll use a phone. This is like, this is good option number two, right? Using a little, Smartphone. The rapper says he needs to start double cutting. Yes, you do. I don't care how much of a routine that you have, you need to break that shit. Trust me, it's 100% worth it. You just, like, it's literally repeating the same thing um, twice. So, as soon as you cut that step out, your install speed up by at least a quarter. Cause you know, the, the cut time, that's what you save yourself. Completely worth it. 
So hopefully I didn't just cut this too long, but we might have just slightly. I don't know where my light is. I knew where it was, and then I don't know where it was. <laughs> so we're gonna cross our fingers on this one. I'm sitting there. <laughs> Lifted Chevy. Oh, that was so nice. That was a super nice comment. I gotta take a second to read that once I get done with this. Oh, <laughs> uh, the secrets come out in chat. Yes, you're 100% correct. But it's, that part's really not much of a secret. If you, uh, if you wanna browse through the uh, info on like the terms of service and look at the shipping address, <laughs> you'll see. It's pretty, it's 100% obvious that way, but I don't know how many people actually dig into that. Anyways, uh, what was that? Lifted Chevy 845. Hey Matt, uh, I said this before I think, but thank you for all the videos. I've been tinning for about a year now and most of the tools that I use are the ones that I'm using as well. Um, tinting with Lexan, but thank you. That's awesome. Glad, glad they helped. And yeah, if like, if this style works for you, then these tools are absolutely like must haves. I don't know, I just keep looking at stuff now and just slowly improving. Um, you know, as like a different squeegee comes out or different scrub pad or, you know, whatever the case may be. So you can, you can uh, change it up a little bit if you like a different tool versus another one. But yeah, I don't know. I just, these all seem to work really, really well. What? A super sticker? Holy shit. This is, this is, I don't know much about YouTube. <laughs> so when the super stickers came out, I kind of laughed. I wish they, I wish we could have custom ones. That's really what it is. Like if we could do custom like tint emoji or like alert super stickers, that would be awesome. You can kind of see that uh, pop up on screen with a donation like that, but gotta take a quick second. So let me just, Jason Ellis with a $3 uh, super sticker, pair punching, oh, didn't say anything along with it too. That's crazy. Thank you, sir. Look at that. I don't know if you guys can see it, but look at this guy, fist bump. Cool. Oh yeah, you can see it in chat anyways. I gotta remember that. Cool. Thanks, man. Much appreciated. Ooh, lifted, lifted Chevy compared the flat out to the Orange Crush and he prefers the Orange Crush. That's the first one I've heard, but that's cool. Like, yeah, everybody's gonna have little differences, but like, I, I'll always recommend this because this is what I used. I've tried both of them, um, but it's, it's good to know that it's, you know, it's not for everybody. So I'm glad you tried both of them. Um, it's a good one to hang on to for sure, but he's an Orange Crush guy, so. Keep that in mind, peeps. Some of you might like the flat out and some of you might like the orange crush. So buy both, that's the message. Go, go to tintdepot.com and buy both. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> So, these ones, you have to be a little careful because they don't give you a lot of space. I used to crease these really, really bad, trying to tuck them in. I used to have pretty aggressive lines. Just try and be a little bit more delicate. I don't really have a good answer. But you only have this little space here. 
So you gotta just kind of shoot for the middle. Uh, how would you tin a car with the windows that don't roll down? Um, I haven't ever done that very successfully. Um, I will usually peel the full um, piece of film and try and install it all at once. Um, at least sometimes, it depends on the window, I guess, and the tightness of the seals. But with, if you can't slide it past the top seal, um, it's usually gonna turn out pretty dirty. So you can try and like scrub it out, rinse it out, use excessive amounts of water and stuff like that. But usually no matter what, it doesn't turn out that well. So. The wrapper uses the Blue Max squeegee. Yes, I've used that long, 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 long time. And to be honest, I've only recently, within the past like four or five months, started using the flat out, um, just because I saw it in front of me. Uh, I was picking up some tools and I saw it and I felt it. And I was like, oh, this could be really good. And it is. So it's very, it's very, um, similar the the blue cru or sorry blue max is very similar to the flat out in the stiffness but the uh um but the 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 sorry what am i trying to say <laughs> there's a bunch of people chatting right now the blue max will nick quite often so that's what i don't like about it and it scratches the windows a little bit more too um like just a miscellaneous scratch here or there if you're not careful. And the flat out just by and large doesn't seem to scratch uh, this film near as often. Like I, I really haven't noticed any scratches from it. And the blade holds up a lot nicer too. So it's definitely worth getting um, and comparing them. So you'll end up replacing blue maxes more often than you will uh, a flat out. And we are done. This back door, cool. What was that? We had a nice long thing here. Uh, Ryan says, I think we'd be better off if you could, if you could have a detailed description on which plotter software. <laughs> Just messing with you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to go into that one again. Um, not anytime soon. Atomic, uh, I'll watch this later though. You guys have a good day. Thanks for hanging out, Atomic. It was good having you. Um, Lifted Chevy says, gonna have to get to work. Uh, I'll watch more in install later, but thanks Matt for all your help. Uh, Tell most of my customers I learned from your channel. Have a great day. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you. Cool. That's really nice. Good luck, sir. Have a good day. So this is all dry. So that's all ready, which is nice because we still got this side too. Yep. Do this door because we're here. Jorge says he's been watching my videos for the past four years and I'm the goat. Aw, thanks, man. <laughs> Greatest of all time. I always think it's funny how it's just pronounced goat. And I have to like think about it for a sec. You're a goat. It's like, what? Oh, I get it. Thanks, man. Marius Decker says he's been using Rewind to raw on the windshield and sees water spots. Um, I'm not sh I don't see any water spots left over. I like if I didn't use it, I wouldn't see water spots. So I'm not entirely sure. Um, I mean, I know you've been around the groups and stuff for a long time. The I'm confused because there's always that drying period. So I don't know if 
people are just thinking of the drying period. So like you'll always have the water condenses together no matter how hard of a squeegee you have. It's just part of the process for it to evaporate out of the, out of the window film. But you shouldn't be seeing any water spots no matter what. You have the surface layer of the, of the film. You have the surface layer of the glass and anything in between. Like, there shouldn't be anything in between. So I'm, I, I'm not sure. If you ever can post a picture of it in the groups, I'd be interested to try and take a look. Cool. Thanks, man. He said he's gonna post it. Good deal. Yeah, yeah. Cause I, I've had a, I've had quite a few people talk about like water spots. And like, so there's water spots. There can be like hard water spots on the outside, but the shouldn't be like, that should be something that you can take care of on the outside. That has nothing to do with the film. Um, but if you're seeing something on the inside, like it's usually dirt. Other than that, I'm not sure. The wrapper says we need uh, glass aid and squeaky monkey in the UK. I th there might be, might be squeaky monkey. Uh, I think the I'm trying to think of the name. Uh, Rapgear.nl. They might have it, but I'm not sure. I remember seeing them a bunch in the groups, and they were trying to get a lot of local U.S only products, but glass aid. Yeah. I'll have to, I don't know. I'll have to try and set up international, maybe a distributor. Um, I'd be happy to ship it out to an international, um, distributor. I just like, <laughs> I'm not a web person. I have to make a Shopify. I know that's not that hard, but like it's, it's currently for sale on, uh, what's what's it called uh wordpress i have a wordpress site on certified tinner and i don't know they they made all the product logistics a little bit annoying to figure out so shopify should be easier Ask your, if you have distributors, tell them to stock it and tell them to reach out to me. Maybe we can work something out. I don't know who to reach out to also. That's another thing. So if you want it stocked locally, um, just reach out to whoever and maybe we can figure something out. I do know it's not fair. Cool, that one's done. There's like a couple good questions I wanted to get to. Also, where's my coffee? Oh, there's my coffee. Oh, Alexander, you are a god. Greetings from Bulgaria. <laughs> I, I'm not, I swear, but thank you. That's really nice. Um, what was it? Rap gear sells raw and dry shrink. Oh, okay. Well, that's cool. You can check out rap gear. I think rapgear.nl. Um, what was the other one? Brandon. Okay, so this is a good question. Hey Matt, how do you keep the little white dots um, at the side seals? They keep getting them no matter how much I clean. So that is perfect for that window coming up. So what am I doing? I need a little sip of coffee. Okay, cool. And 
we'll go do that one. Window guy, I'll be your Canadian distributor. <laughs> um, if you have like a store with like tint tools and, and stuff like that. Okay, so. Uh, shit, I forgot the name, I'm sorry. But we're gonna be talking about dirt specs for the next little bit on the sides. I love it. Cause you'll notice I don't have a very extensive cleaning process. I scrape the bottom. Um, you could do that with a one inch razor blade. I like using these gazer, gator blades um, because they have this little edge and you can scrape out the seal a little bit better. We have not wiped them. We have not taped them. We have not done anything special. Yes, this is brand new, but just look at like my Lincoln LS video and you'll see me do the same thing. So we'll spray this and then we'll take a scrub pad. So you don't have to use a scrub pad with Squeaky Monkey. This is just my new cleaning thingy because this will deep clean the glass and it'll get rid of hydrophobic coatings. So it's got an abrasive in it, which is why I only do it on the main portion of the window. I don't like getting it into the side seals. So I'll scrub the whole window down and then I'll wipe it off with a dirty towel. The towel does not have to be particularly clean. It just needs to get the shit off the window. And then I'll take a slightly cleaner towel. And that's mainly because I can have some grit from that scrub build up at the top. So we just want to make sure that part's mainly wiped off. Um, so for the rest of this, now my um, slip solution, it sheets on the glass a little bit nicer. It doesn't beat up. Um, we squeegee everything to one side and we swipe it down. So the reason why you're getting a bunch of little specks is really not your cleaning. There's a good chance it's not your cleaning. I haven't seen your cleaning. Um, you can clean windows over and over again, but it, what it comes down to is wherever you have difficulty trying to install the film, that's where you're gonna get dirt. It's almost like dirt is really telling you where you struggle and your install. I guess that's a good way to look at it. It's kind of like, you can tell what went wrong with an install by looking at the dirt patterns. Like it's, it's a little crazy, but it's true. So I haven't wiped off the outside of this either. So we just peel this corner, do half, half, basically like half in the middle of here, half in the middle of there, maybe a little bit farther. It doesn't really matter that much. Um, missed it. I don't want to soak this top edge um, and get a bunch of dirt running down into the film. Um, just spray it enough to coat it. And then I will put, I will install this edge first. So you'll see I'm, I'm leaving that hang off of the side seal and I'll kind of like hold it right here. And this edge has to be flat against the glass. If it starts bunching up, it's gonna start getting lots of dirt and shit like that, even though I cleaned it. So you just gotta keep it smooth, even, flat against the glass. And same for this, like push it this way, create a little ripple and then coast it into the side seal. And as long as you're keeping it flat against the window, you're basically pushing all the debris outwards and you're not giving it a chance to feed back in. So just line up your top edge and that's going to be the main reason why you're getting stuff is because I can almost guarantee that you're fighting with your front or back edges while you're trying to install the pattern. That just comes with experience and technique. That's the things to like watch out for and practice over and over. But if you can do that smooth and well, your windows will come out much, much, much cleaner. And we'll go over the bottom right now because that's where we're at. So once it's locked in place, I turn the car back on because it shut off. And we roll up our window, turn the car back off because we're done. 
rolling up and down our windows. So here is another point. So as I'm peeling this liner out, dirt could feed back into my film. So you'll see me always use a little bit more water in this area, just as a precaution. Um, I'll shoot a jet of water up and sweep all that down and then peel out my liner from underneath. And then we'll do the same thing again real quick. Just kind of give it another swoosh up there, making sure that corner is clean. A um, little bit of water sprayed on the film and the glass. And then we'll start with tucking in the corners. So same thing, keep that edge flat. And as you keep that flat, you're not giving it a chance to bunch up very much. Or somebody says, or teach them to bottom load. It's an easy car to pull the sweeps. Um, you're not really gonna see that very much on this channel, just because there's a lot of circumstances that aren't easy to pull the sweeps. And I like teaching more of a universal way. It's how I learned. Um, and it's, it's just what I teach. So yes, you could pull sweeps and there's a lot of vehicles you can do that on and it'll make the install process easier. But then you're gonna run in some windows where you can't do that. And you're gonna have to do, install it this way. And then you're gonna try to and you're not gonna do very well. So that's just like, everybody's got their own thing. Um, and there's no wrong way to do it really, as long as you focus on one method. Um, and, and learn one first, I guess. So now we wipe it off, we've cleaned it out. So it really comes down to like your install. That's, that's where you're gonna see the most dirt. Hope that helps some though. Just copy me. It takes time, but you'll get there. First, first year is always the hardest. So let's go grab our film and we'll cut out that quarter. Um, Armando asks, have I ever done a 2001 Integra? No. No, I don't. I hardly ever get Acuras. So it's just not super common here. Same thing for VWs here and there. I'll do a VW, but I don't get those very often. A lot of the foreign, like German manufactured cars. So I'll get like some Audis and some Mercedes. Um, and some BMWs, but they're not like the most common, but I still tint them the same way. I think I got that. I could see most of it. Cross our fingers. Hope to find up. Ooh. Ooh, that's looking good. This back edge too, just to let you guys know, is actually offset a little bit back. So when you cut this exact, you almost need a little bit extra overlap on the front. So when you like, when you fit it into place, you don't have any light gaps. Looking like at it diagonal, that would be the worst. Cause it's literally like right here. So every time they look out in the mirror, like they'd see a gap or something, that would be a big no-no. Uh oh, we might have slight overlappage there. If you can help them out on the Acura Integra, by all means, have at it. I have not, I've not seen one in person. 
I hardly ever get an Acura. If I do, it's like for front doors, but it's very, very rare. Maybe we need to... Ever had to do a Jaguar X-Type, those decklets? Yeah, those things suck. Here we go. I think I'm gonna have to let this dry a little bit. It's bunching up. There we go. You're welcome, sir. I hope it helps. It should. It does take a lot of practice, um, but good luck. Cool. So that one's pretty much done. I think I got to touch up a little edge on it, um, but we'll get back to that. We're going to let it sit for a little bit. Um, Brandon says, thank you. I've been cleaning the same way, but definitely do struggle with tucking the sides, but, I'll, but I haven't been folding it the same way. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, give it a try. Hope it helps. Um, ever do a Jaguar X-Type, the back deck lids are hell. <laughs> yes, yes they are. I still don't like those. I only get them every once in a long while. Um, and I've, I'm uh, not proud to admit that I've, I've left big uh, cutouts on some of the, some of the third brake lights. But I, I will do everything I can to try and press that third brake light down and slide the film behind it. But yeah, if they're not fun, you, the easiest way is to pull it, but there's so much work involved. It's just not a great situation. Ken Glass, you looking forward to going to Chicago Auto Press? It will be super fun. Thank you for bringing that up. I'm gonna drop this in the chat again. Um, so coming up March 9th to March, <sighs> hang on, let <laughs> me. March 9th to March 11th. There we go. There's the details. Okay, so March 9th to March 11th, I will be personally teaching a class along with a couple of other fantastic installers over at Chicago Auto Pros, their Lombard location. So we have 12 spots open in total, and I think a handful have already been um, booked. So get your spots. Um, I will be putting out a dedicated video um, about some more information about it and probably just some good old prep videos for what to expect for the class and what would help you um, get more value out of the class. So I'm really, really excited um, to be going over there, working with those guys. Um, they have an awesome looking location. They're really, they know what they're talking about. So not just learning how to tank cars, but also how to run a tent business. That is the theme. So it'll be, it's gonna be a lot of fun. 100% worth it. Teach you how to make your money back real, real fucking quick. So I dropped a link in the chat, go check it out. Um, feel free to contact them too. Um, they'll talk you through any details um, about the class too. And feel free to ask me anything right now too. It's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun. I should mention. Um, anybody that signs up also for the class, they're providing $150 in tools, um, and Lumar is providing film. So um, I just checked, the class is 1300 for three days. It's on Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, March 9th to the 11th. So they're providing $150 in tools. Um, Lumar sponsoring the film. So you all get to play with some Lumar film. I don't know if they're sending rolls home yet um, with people, but if they're smart, they will. And we're gonna have just a good old time. So the connections that you make, the info that you get, like I, you see a lot of stuff here, but hands-on training is really completely worth it. There's just, 
you never know quite what you're gonna get out of it that's invaluable to you going forward with your business. So, the, uh, I taught a class, I have some videos on the channel actually about it a little bit. Um, a couple students, um, sticky tents, I mentioned them too in a tent news episode, the first one. Um, they were tinning out of their garage. Um, took both of them collectively five-ish hours to tin a full car. They came out, did a class, went back, hustled a lot, and they have since sped up a bunch. And then they have grown their little local business out of their garage and are now just opened up their own physical location. So super, super awesome to see that kind of stuff happen. Okay, so somebody earlier asked, does glass aid affect shrinking? Um, so it does a little bit, but the way that I shrink, not much. So some people have said, I don't know. The... I don't know, I, when you get to the edges, the edges are raised a little bit. So I haven't had the film catch on the edges, but it does kind of like pull together a little bit differently, I think, not as smooth maybe, I don't know. But you you really just get the heat closer and you can cook the, the edge and you're completely fine. So it really hasn't changed my style at all but it has made the glass safer, and that's what I like about it. That's the main thing. Especially if you pull shrink, like nothing's gonna be different if you pull shrink it. So you're literally going straight over that, that section. The rapper says it's an excuse to go to America, but he might get stuck at Border Patrol because he's a big brown dude. Oh man, come on. I would sure hope not. But I don't like Border. But if you have a visa, you'll be fine. Wait, I don't even think you need one. Oh, you'd be fine. So these 2020 back windows are pretty, I don't know, they're exactly the same as far as I can tell. So if you've ever tinted a Fusion, nothing new to see here. Um, somebody asked if I tint headlights. Um, I've only tinted a handful. It's something I need to get into a little bit more. And I've used uh, a film called Lux. That's the first film that I've seen in person that that would make it feasible. It's so user friendly. Cause headlights and taillights, like they're getting crazy depending on the car, right? Some are, very few are really all that simple now. You got exaggerated edges and stuff like that. So it's very similar to uh, color change vinyl from what I've heard. I don't have experience with color change vinyl, but I do have a little bit of practice with Lux. So I was able to tint my uh, Explorer taillights.
So there's that. So we're gonna cut this out, and then the other difference, well, no, it's not a difference. It's what I normally do, but I'll pull the glass aid off and then I'll touch up all the edges um, before I go to install it. But that's something I would have done anyways. So, soon, soon as you shrink, soon as you shrink like a full window and then you cut your edges, you need to, uh, you should shrink it again anyways, like just the edges, because your relief points or like where it all shrunk together is a little bit changed because you basically cut that section off. Aw, that was a really nice comment. I want to read that one. Hang on a sec. But somebody asked also in there, um, in one comment just now. Oh, thanks for hanging out, rapper. Have a good one. Um, but somebody asked, uh, how can I hear what you guys are typing? Um, I have a text-to-speech enabled um, in the chat, and I'm wearing a headset right now. So it literally reads every single comment that you guys make. So as I'm talking, it's kind of hard to hear. Um, as I'm... As I'm talking, it's kind of hard to hear some of the, the comments. So I try and like pick and choose questions and then I just kind of roll with it as best I can. So I'll miss quite a few of them, but I try and answer what it, whatever, I, whatever I can. Definitely not trying to ignore anybody. What was that question? Well, there's a very, very nice comment. Uh-oh, we're gonna have to plug this in. Okay, so we gotta touch that up and we gotta plug the laptop back in. Uh, let's see, what was it? Marvin says, love your channel. You have no idea how much my tinning has improved from watching yours. Ah, oh, that's awesome. So glad it helps. Thank you so much. Um, uh, Michael asks, you blow heat under the film at the bottom, but your film doesn't roll up. It does a little bit. Um, oh, that's interesting. Cool. See, see this, see this all coming off in one piece. I like it. Okay. Couple good things there. Um, somebody just asked what tape I'm using. Um, it's my own thing. It's called glass aid. Um, he says that he used 3M and, um, it's a little difficult around the edges. It's also not as, uh, thick and it's more expensive. So in the description, um, certifiedtinner.com, you can find glass aid. That's my own thing. That's what I'm using. It's four bucks a roll, really fucking cheap. Um, and it's thick enough to where you can cut on it um, and not cut through to the glass. That's the whole idea. You can cut through it. Um, it's a little bit of a balancing act to get the, get the hang of, but yeah, it's better than 3M. Like 3M doesn't have their own version. They have like 3M vinyl pinstriping. It's not the same thing. And it's like way more expensive. Okay, so you see this right here? This is kind of where it can start to curl. It's just about learning how much heat to apply. Um, but I didn't do a good job right there. I can get this to lay down, but that's an example of it curling back. So. You just got to find that sweet spot to where you shrink the film down. Um, but I, I'll shrink always past the edges before um, cutting it off and stuff. And that gives me a pretty, pretty nice shrink. I used to cut it exact and then install or and then shrink the film. But that was Lumar. Lumar was by far like the easiest shrinking film. They're all a little different. So my film is going to work a little bit different from whatever you're using if, as long as it's not the same stuff. Doesn't mean that it's worse. Um, if it's harder to shrink, it just means that it's different. 
Okay, so let's cut out these quarters and then we'll install this back window. This is where a brighter light would come in handy. I also could tape these, I just didn't. Oh no, I think I need some light though. Of course. Of course I left this over here. Doo -doo. Let's turn this on. Pa. I'll find my light after the stream. It's somewhere around here. Normally I'd have this prepped beforehand. Do I advise people to get a uh, lighter tent if they don't have a backup camera? Um, no, not really. I usually don't have much discussions with most customers. It's really just whatever they feel like getting is what we install. So there's like limits for like the front windows. Marvin says, he said a few things, hang on, <laughs> shit. Uh, he says, thanks for the tip um, on the tape. And he took a quick lunch break and now he's headed back to work. Well, thank you for hanging out. Um, oh yeah, he says, we'll see you the next one or see the rest of the video later. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you for hanging out. Okay, so Somebody asked me earlier about shrinking quarter windows. Now, it's not something that I do very often um, on the little ones, but these ones in particular have like a real fine frit line and that makes stuff pop up a little bit. Oh, they actually made it a little bit smaller on these. Interesting. Still fine, but a little bit smaller. Weird. So I'll just take two seconds and shrink them. Might as well. It'll keep you from having headaches when you're installing it. So we need some back window tools. We need to take out those headrests that only take a couple seconds. And let's plug in the laptop while we're over here. Because my laptop doesn't like to stay alive. So we need a bulldozer. We need, where's my, this guy and we'll take a shortcut in there in case good deal so because we have the quarters prepped um, we have the back glass ready to go should be able to just knock all three of them out together let's start with the quarters Panda asks, or says he's stuck on ordering Avery or Lumar. Um, Avery, or sorry, Lumar, you have to order direct from Lumar and they have minimums. So a lot of, a lot more people would go with Lumar uh, based on rep and customer service and a bunch of things. Really, really solid brand and company, but they're much more expensive. So you have, I believe, 800 you have to order a minimum of 800 per month with them um, to maintain lumar dealer status so um, if you don't they won't sell to you anymore so you just have to be a much bigger business so if you're not established already um, you're gonna have to go with avery unless you're going in hot so avery you can order from a few different places Sun Distributing Direct is uh, is my local 
um, distributor. You can also order from like 44 Tools and there's a handful of other Avery distributors across the country. If you go to Avery, um, they should have all listings of all their distributors, but they're, they're much less stringent on like who they sell to. I'm not ready to, to go with Lumar. I really don't want to. But yeah, they're both both good companies. I think Lumar's got got a better selection um, for like upgrades, so like ceramics and stuff. But Avery does have their little selection. It's just kind of like a three-step system. All right. These headrests, they pop up very easy. We're gonna put a few towels down. Just a couple. So, the thing about the fusions is that middle. But I remember ever since they updated these to the ones with the turn knobs, which is what this has, this part here is much easier to sneak behind. So just like with these, you got enough wiggle room right at that bottom edge to sneak the film behind. There's no pressure points there. So yeah, these are pretty straightforward. Exact same as the last ones. Side swiper. So we give this Ken Glass that he ordered a bulldozer, sent it back because it was not the same thing. Yeah, there's a lot of off-brand ones. China. China you basically, if you're ordering off of Amazon, um, they... Uh, it's, it's pretty much Chinese tool manufacturers. So you don't really see any other ones around. And to be honest, I've been using a Chinese one for so long, I forgot what the regular one actually looks like. Or what the actual, like if there's much of a difference. But judging from you sending it back, I'd imagine there's definitely a difference. <laughs> but if you want, Sorry, I gotta bite that. If you if you want to get American tools or just like the pro versions or the actual originals, you really gotta order them off of like actual tool websites. They're they're not distributing on. Uh, they're not really distributing anything on uh, on Amazon yet. Main reason is tint tools really do have pretty low margins and they have established supply chains with like you know distributors and stuff so they're basically they're gonna have to go direct to consumer at some point if they want to stay on if they want to sell on amazon is the oh somebody asked is the class that i'm tinting in chicago more for beginners or advanced um, I'd say it's a good in between. Um, the the class itself will be more beneficial to you if you have some hands-on experience. But if you're just going into it completely green, like I would say that with any class. Yeah, there's classes that can teach you from the ground up, but it's really easy to just get some film get some cheap tools and practice some and then go into a class because then you know what to like what what film feels like what shrinking is like um and you'll you'll learn a lot more out of it um i don't know there's there's a lot of people that assume that these classes just exist to take your money and it's like 
Of course you can't teach somebody from the ground up in three days. That's not what they're meant for. You'll be much, much better off and they can put you on a really, really good direction. So I would like, I'll have some videos that I want to put out before the class happens. And it's just kind of like preparation for the class almost. And that's kind of just get some film. This is how you should practice. This is how we're going to learn in, in person. So when you get here, you'll, you'll be two steps ahead. Was that comment? Did I did I see an interesting comment here? Uh, see, oh, Omar says saves you money, Panda. Um, yeah, taking a class will, it, even though <laughs> it costs money in the beginning. But the whole idea of the class is to get you sped up, is to get you going, is to point you in the right direction, so you can pay the class off extremely quickly and make money. That's what it's all about. That's what I teach on this channel. So whether or not you attend the class, you'll still be seeing the same type of content here that you can learn from. But yes, it's hugely beneficial to get some hands-on training. There's just not a lot of it. And it's been something I've wanted to do for a long time too, so. Noah asks, what is my dream car? <laughs> Huh, that's a good question. So I like, there's a practical car I wanna get and that's a mini, cause I really like minis. Um, there aren't really a lot of exciting cars now. There used to be some, but they don't make up, like, you know, you have Chargers, Challengers, um, Camaros, those are your typical, like, you know, two door coupes that you see around here. Um, Huh. I'm not, I'm not sure. I don't really have a dream car right now, unfortunately. If I think of something that like stands out, I know there's a few, I just, they skip my mind right now. For as much as I tank cars, I'm not that big of a car person, believe it or not. The new, uh, the new vets look pretty sweet though. Ferrari 458, that was my, uh, that was my favorite Ferrari for a while. The new Lambo um, SUV, that one's actually pretty sick. It's nice to see something different from a brand like that. Welcome, Blair. Um, do I tent Volvo V90? I th Not recently. I'd have to look that one up, actually. And I can do that in a couple of seconds. That's an interesting one. It sounds really familiar, though. Volvo's by and large, haven't been V90. What do we got for the back? Why does, why does nobody ever show like what the back looks like? Ooh, wagon. Oh yeah, I've done those. Yeah, for sure. Um, like most wagons, um, like I've done a uh, Audi wagon. I think it was. 
done a handful of them. Just tighter seals, annoying rear quarters, and that hatch um, looks a little bit similar to the like the VW um, VW style hatches. So you're gonna have tight panels all the way around it, most likely. And that's not fun. Okay, so we need the heat gun a little bit. We got one little thing to press out on the inside. So we gotta take the power off this for a minute. Cause where that, where that edge kind of rolled here, it's, it's all laid down, but I got a finger from it. Tin glass as the new vet will be fun to tint. Yeah, yeah, I have not had one actually yet. Done a bunch of stingrays. Those were fine. Like those were super cool. I really liked the stingray when it came out. I've just seen them for a while. So I'm not like, they're not that exciting anymore. So the new ones, they, they did a really, really cool redesign. They're really like the direction that they moved with, with all the vets. Cause I, I didn't like the old bubble style. Um, but the, the Stingray, like that car really impressed a lot of people. It was just finally, there's a cool car that turns a lot of heads, you know, cause you have your regular, um, you have your regular, like, Audi, BMW, Mercedes. Those are all nice cars, right? But a lot of them, like for a long time, they all kind of look the same and they're not exciting. Like if you're not a car person and it drives by, you don't know that it's anything special. That was like my biggest problem with a lot of these. It's like they're expensive and they're nice and they'd be nice to own, but you ain't turning any heads with them. Oh, we just made a big loop. So there is a very small hair right here that we have to pull that's right down into the film right past the dot and I can't see shit I think it's still there just a little guy hopefully we got him yes we did Fantastic. Address in. We need some better lighting. We might have to put a tent light in here for some lighting for future live streams. Believe it or not, because I don't need it on the outside necessarily, but this, this dark interior is some shitty lighting around here. <laughs> so what time is it? 140. He needs it by two. So we got 20 minutes to go. Not bad. Not bad at all. We ran a live stream. We got this done. Customer's going to get his car early as long as we move that out of the way. And I'm pretty sure I still have one little thing to touch up here though. Yes, I do. Just this edge. I hate that. Oh, there we go. Yep, we're good. Just press a little bit against the rubber. So we should be good there. Yeah, man. I think we're pretty much done. Let me go over the edges real quick. I think we'll call it a stream.
This looks good. We're checking for little pinch points. There's usually one that's going to be here. She looks good. It's definitely harder to tell in this lighting. Yeah, we're good. Nice. That was quick. Alrighty. Well, they're wrapping up that. They're probably going to pull it out in a couple seconds and then I can get this one out of here. So, let me toss that here. Uh, this will be fun in summertime when uh, I don't wear a hat. <sighs> cool. Thank you. Oh, we got some coffee. Is that the new side swipe? Oh, this guy. Um, yeah. This is the shortcut. This is by uh, Triage, and I really like their stuff. It hasn't hasn't been the greatest though. So it's been real helpful for like really tight corners, and that's what the I talked to the guy that made it, and that's kind of what he said its intended purpose. But I can see like I want to use this as a side swipe replacement but I think it's a little bit too rigid for it to form to the glass. Cause on the side sweep, you have like a nice soft blade here. So if they adjust the blade and make it a little bit more squishy, maybe like a softer version or something, I think it'd do really well, but I think it's just a little bit too rigid. So it's handy to have, but I don't use it very much. I still bring it in back windows in case though. Yeah, I think we're pretty much good. So, Jason Ellis. Jason Ellis says, thanks for another badass stream. Stream, you make my mundane life a little better. Aw, oh, I'm glad you like this stream, man. They're fun to hang out and talk with everybody because it's something that's grossly lacking. In like, we can all have a discussion in the tent groups, but it's not the same. It's not the same as like having an actual conversation, so. So, here we go. So yeah, she turned out nice. Ooh. What was that? Somebody, uh, here at home in Sweden cost 900 US dollars for, to tint my Volvo V90. Woo, damn. That's, a, that's an expensive tint job for sure. Um, have just bought a new Volvo V90 D5 white and it's so boring to run without tint. Thanks for the nice live show. Oh, thanks, man. Sorry I can't be there in Sweden to tint it myself. I'd love to make 900 on that one, though. That'd be great. <laughs> nice, like some rice. What? Okay. Well, we're going to go ahead and end things then. Um, I want to thank all you guys for hanging out for stream number two. A um, couple of things before we close out. Um, remember, uh, Iron Duck Designs is giving away 10 Tint Stuff t-shirts. Um, so if you want to enter, I will post that in the chat. And then also, uh, Car Guys Supplies. Chicago Auto Pros, but it's on their Car Guys Supplies website. Um, info for the new class. Um, we'll put that in the chat too. So if you guys want to come out, um, learn some tinning, uh, March 9th through the 11th, I will be teaching a three-day class along with their installers. We, I think we're going to have a Model 3 there. We're going to have some cool stuff there. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, so check both those things out. And next live stream should be Friday, as long as I have a full car and a little bit of time in between there. We'll get that going. So. Thanks you guys so much again for hanging out and as always I'll see you in the next one.